I'll do the, the official kickoff. Uh, welcome everyone to the Special Purpose Operating System Working Group. We are under the CNCF and therefore follow the CNCF Code of Conduct, um, which is linked, uh, I think, in the agenda doc. Uh, the charter is there. Oh yeah, Code of Conduct is there. So um, basically be good. <laughs> there is a link to the agenda in the chat. Um, and kind of just have an open discussion agenda this week. Um, we should talk about KubeCon, but uh, first thing on the list in there is FOSDEM. I know a few of you went to FOSDEM, love to hear about it. I wasn't able to make it. It was nice. Uh, we had an hour to discuss. We saw some people from projects I didn't know of, new projects as well. Yeah, maybe what wasn't so nice is that we were told we had the room the same day in the morning. <laughs> we were, we were, so, we were yeah. not told, like we didn't receive an email or notification or anything. It was just me checking the schedule during breakfast. I was like, okay, <laughs> let's figure out who's here. <laughs> but yeah, Tilo did a very good job uh, moderating it. So thanks, Tilo. Even last minute, I think it worked and it was useful. It was actually, yeah, I was dice uh, chatting to you folks. And as, as, as Moro said, um, we had representatives of two specialized operating systems there um, we didn't even know of. Uh, first was a CNCF project called EVE. They do edge operating system stuff. Um, uh, so like highly embedded, but um, we had a lot of touch points. Um, and the other was actually an old friend of mine, Cohen Coy, uh, who I know from my open embedded days. And um, he told us about a switch operating system or no, a fabric, not switch, um, but basically the, the same and um, yeah, wild. Do you know, was that recorded? No, the, uh, the BOF sessions, they, they do not record. Unfortunately, it was, it was interesting. We almost had like a room for, for, for us to nerd out. Everybody in the room, in the audience, uh, had like one thing or other to do with specialized operating systems. It was nice. Nice. Do they know about this meeting? The people that, that we were kind of discovered at FOSCO? I, I, point, I pointed out that this group exists and that we meet um, every second uh, Thursday. <clears throat> And you also Love shared links. It. Yeah, you also shared links, I think, and, and the chat and all. Yeah. I don't have a link for the other project. I found the link for the Eve OS. I don't remember the other one. I took a bit of a look, but I, I couldn't find it either. I could actually ping Cone and just ask him. Yeah, I only found their company website, but uh, didn't see any links to the project it was what the uh, soft iron cloud soft right iron cloud. right yeah that's true um i i think that it's highly specific like it's only for their hardware right they're 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 producing their own hardware and um they're having this interesting operating system that doesn't use system d but has a huge tickle script as pit one yeah that's <laughs> like exciting you <laughs> but i mean i i trust tone like he's a he has literally decades of experience in building this stuff, so he knows what he's doing. The nice takeaway from that meeting was, I think, that uh, in general in the market out there, uh, people do want Kubernetes, but sometimes they don't. Yeah, I felt more like uh, us developers don't like it very much sometimes, <laughs> but customers do need it uh, or do want it at least. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, not, don't yeah. add me, but the, the way I see, the way I perceive like the need for Kubernetes, it's kind of, it's solving the same level of problem that Java did back in the day when, you know, Java spread. Uh, and that's non-technical. It, it, it solves a hiring and management problem, right? Like you can, you can take any uh, semi-intelligent, technically interested person, put them in front of a few uh, uh, like Java workshops, and then after a few months, they're productive. And it's it's kind of the same with, with Kubernetes. It gives you a framework, and it puts you on rails. And that's that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, we also agreed uh, we're going to do it next year. 
least that's what we said. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure what it means. So uh, if we should like a heads up early to prepare something, you know, more structured or something. But yeah, keep in mind that people wanted to do that next year. So you know, maybe, yeah, maybe. I, I think it's something that, that we can evolve, right? Like we will have like a next iteration on this at KubeCon, which will be more structured. And we can even build on the input that we that we collected, like all of the interesting hatch points that we had, uh, the need for Kubernetes, for instance, or the, the at least the request um, to have something. And um, what all of the operating systems made special and then what, what unified us at the, at the same time. That, that was interesting to discuss. Yeah. What is normally the plan for these meetings? Because uh, what I was thinking is more like, okay, we can do the every, uh, the traditional normal meeting discussing all the different topics that we want to discuss here. And then uh, when we have FOSDEM or whatever other uh, meetup, we can do the in-person things that are very hard to do otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we want to define like an app, a potential output for that type of meeting? Like, you know, it's not just let's discuss these things, but there's more kind of decisions being made or more kind of specific topics we want to broach with a group instead of it being kind of unstructured. I would say that would be nice, like some sort of uh, yeah. workshop uh, uh, or something like that, uh, where we could figure out how we can I don't know, leverage uh, our different uh, skills or projects or, or whatever. And also uh, that's, I guess, one of the few moments where we all have the same audience uh, in the same room, right? So it would be a good time to uh, raise questions from, from users if they are there or, uh, I don't know, point them out because I, I sometimes feel that since we are a special purpose, it, it really feels like, uh, you have someone has to basically handhold you to drag you the whole way to, to understand what we're doing. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I also like the idea that, that you know we grab action items and then go with it and then check in with the um, with the office hours here on on our progress. If like there's something that the whole group is interested in pursuing, uh, technology wise or otherwise, then uh, that might be. Um, as soon as you have a name on it and like a rough ETA, um, it's uh, I, I think you can you can track this up a lot better. So, uh, so th th that specific uh, kind of meeting we had, it was among people working on those projects, and I think the goal of such a meeting would be to improve the uh, contact points. So th there are projects we'll rely on. And I think that's because we all take different directions. I mean, we, we discussed how, for example, uh, uh, we, we use images, full images uh, or instead of Butterface, for example, and how this is different in terms of space. So we all have different goals in some regard, but there are some contact points. And I think when we discuss all together, our goal should be to improve the, the things, you know, the, the base Tool, toolkit, right? Uh, but when, when we have people using, actually users of our projects, like if you had a dev room or something, like if people join just to see the progress, then we could be more broad, like uh, we mm. can mention updates and features and such, but we didn't have such a room. So depending on what we get in the next FOSDEM, maybe we can expand a bit. If anybody joined, a user joined the meeting we had, I think, okay, it would be kind of interesting, but uh, not exactly what they would want to see, right? What exactly does every project do and things mm. like that. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> we didn't have enough time to present. I mean, uh, we should focus on one thing. So yeah, let, let's see what kind of uh, space we get and time slots and yeah. Is there another <clears throat> conference we want to kind of organize something similar at? So not necessarily FOSDEM, but maybe a, I'm thinking like, open source summit or something, see like a Linux foundation type of event. That seems like it would be the same audience, right? I, I don't know. What do we have? What options? Which one did you mention? Um, open source summit. There's two of those a year, or maybe three. Um, it's a Linux foundation event. Yeah, and it's usually we... combined with a bunch of different conferences, right? Like it's 
got several subconferences. I think that the uh, it's typically parallel with um, the Linux maintainers um, conf or meeting as well. Well, the Those Europe one were in good time. Yeah, it's it's chaotic as <laughs> yeah, I don't think we. I mean, like Open Source Summit is pretty soon in Europe, right? It's just around the corner. I don't have a date in front of me. Yeah, September in Austria. That, I think. Ah, it's okay. Uh, I think yeah, I guess, for yeah. papers are wait uh, April the thirteenth. Uh, so end of April is the CFP. Yeah, that's easy enough. Yeah. yeah, I guess I was thinking about if you look too, they have um, Cloud Open Container Con, like all these kind of sub conferences, um, embedded Linux Linux mm -hmm. Con. So I think we have several matching. Um, Mm -hmm. Topic areas. Yeah, that's a good idea. I agree. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Maybe an action item for a later. I mean, we still have enough time, so we can move this to. Is the agenda? No, we don't have anywhere to note future action items. Uh, we have a we have kind of a tracking thing, pending items section directly below the the etiquette on the on the first page. Uh, we currently use it for for tracking the presentations of the special purpose, mm -hmm. like the intro presentations. Okay. But that would be a good spot, like for recurring okay. items. Okay, prepare something for. For I need a link. Um, I have a link. Ah, I put it there. Actually, the CFP. April 30th. Yes. And they have the similar uh, session type. So they have a birds of a feather panel. That's sort of thing we can probably fit this into a variety of different sites. Yeah. There is one in uh, the US as well. So because we're all here in Europe, right? But maybe the other one is interesting if there are people in that time zone. When is the other one? I think it's right around the corner. I, I don't have the date in front of me, but let's see here. April 16th. Yeah. Uh, it's very close. So. Yeah. We might get a different audience in the US, though. You know, there might be other special purpose operating systems that we're not hitting. But it's too, early. It's too late for us to get into North America. It's in Seattle. That'll be convenient for some folks. <laughs> All right. We have a plan for that. Uh, Sounds good. Should we discuss the KubeCon panel here? We still have one meeting before that, but maybe that's last minute. Do we know the structure is going to be the same? Who is moderating? Is it, one is it of us? One? Is it one or two meetings? I thought it was mid-March, mid right? Yeah, I know we have March 7th and yeah, I guess technically the 14th is the week before. So that would be this, the third Thursday of March. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, two me two meetings until then. Perfect. I, I like the, the brain, brainstorming doc. I just I have a very full plate this week, but I'll definitely uh, circle back on that next week and um, try to capture some of the input that we had in um, the uh, FOSDEM panel. So Perfect. Nice. Be good. Yeah. So for those not that weren't copied on that, we we just have a Google Doc. We're brainstorming on things to talk about in the panel so that we don't go in cold and have some a chance to think about what we want to say for things. Um, yeah. uh, I, I could open up if anyone else that's not part of the panel wants to throw some questions on there um, or, would... or just ask in the Slack channel or whatever. Yeah, or maybe even just put it in the agenda. Uh, yeah, yeah. Talk about it today. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Cool. Right. Did you folks have any talks at FOSTEM? Or did you encounter any talks that we should absolutely see because they're right in our area? We failed yeah. to attend some. <laughs> we were in the queue, but uh, we realized we were 
too late and people were already waiting for the next one. And we had a talk, uh, not exactly about uh, Kairos itself, but rather more about how we uh, moved our CI to self-hosted runners for, for GitHub, ac uh, GitHub actions. So dog food, you know, actually running Kairos to run our CI. Uh, I think that's that's totally, I mean, the what what I could give us is kind of a backlog of 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 you know related presentations that we could document uh, maybe in the GitHub repo or somewhere else. Um, awesome to review uh, and to check out. Um, we had two presentations. Let me find them. So we uh, them in the agenda doc as well. I think we should, so we can find them later. Yeah, yeah. At least they're somewhere then and. Um, uh, if we work out a document uh, for the tech runtime repo later, then we can even we can even start working on a, on a list there. All right. Let's see. For me, another one that was quite interesting was uh, the one from Leonard in the distributions room, where True. he's trying to. Um, is basically trying to convince distributions to adopt all the UKI and trusted boot ecosystem, which sounds uh, like it's going to be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's really cool. I think that uh, he's trying to bring. Uh, I mean, he's been doing it for a while now, but um, I don't think it was done in the distribution room before. Let me try to find it. That was at 9 a.m. We missed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I found the link. Ah, did someone put it already? Uh, yep, I yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. That's something that that that's some direction uh, he's been pursuing uh, like for the for the last years, and um, so the whole SysX thing actually plays into that. Uh, because it makes um, it makes these uh, immutable distros extensible uh, in a in a secure way. So that's that's neat. Yeah. But it's nice to watch because it explains the different uh, uh, parts of the whole ecosystem. So that was good. Um, I have to say I'm sad that uh, there was no uh, uh, there was a Wapi Dev Room the year before, right? And uh, I felt that was, was really nice because then you can stay in the same room, not having to jump from one place to another. And you have at least uh, three, four talks that are going to be interesting for you. Uh, this time it, it made it very challenging because they were in the different uh, buildings. And uh, yeah, th there is not enough time to go from one to the other and then do a... 30 minute queue, right? Uh, to go yeah. see a 20 minute talk. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, most of the dev rooms were pretty small and they were like overcrowded. Um, a colleague of mine had a had a cluster API intro talk in the virtualization dev room on um, Saturday and uh, every single seat was taken. And um, look, before all the seats, between the seats and the, the stage, there were two rows of people sitting on the floor. Like, wow. Yeah, they, they did some major change for what I understand. I was talking to one of the, uh, the room maintainers and it seems uh, they got in general less time. If previous years you would get an entire day, you would only get half a day sometimes or smaller rooms. Um, which, I mean, I don't know, I guess it depends what you're looking for because at least it felt full. So for some dev rooms, people were excited about that. Um, but yeah. The second day, I think many people decided to just camp in a room and not change <laughs> at all. Even, even if the subject changed, it didn't make much sense. So you could just no. stick until the next one. It had better chances of attending something you liked. Yeah, just, and I, I've seen people listening to talks uh, with headphones in like dev rooms 
they were sitting there basically following a uh, entirely different talk, but they wanted to secure their seat for the, for the next talk or something. So that happened too. I had the fortune of uh, having a large room. Uh, I was in uh, Le Mire, and uh, even, even that one was very full. I had Leonard almost asking a question, but he smiled, so I guess it was a trick question, and he decided not to, not to do it. Cool. Yeah, good times. Do we have any other topic for today? I'm looking at the agenda. else on there i did want to bring up the idea one of the things when we started the working group was uh the idea of uh, or, or one of the potential outputs of the working group would be a uh, like a white paper or white papers um thought that that could be an interesting thing as we're getting close to the end of the presentations of the projects that have joined so far is to start to take some of the concepts um and some of the common things we've seen across the different projects and start getting that into a white paper and um, having something kind of semi-official looking to to point people at to to say you know look this isn't these aren't just toy projects we're we're actually doing something here um, mm. check it out <laughs> so I know we we've run into that before where um, when I was on Bile Rocket of, of folks wondering if you know is Bile Rocket real is it going to stick around is this something that I should actually bother using or, or is this some kind of experiment that's going to go away soon so i think if we start to get more things like white papers or blog posts and um things to show that the you know even though we're not our, our projects aren't super popular yet um that they're, they're, we most of us have been around for a while and and we have production workload running on our projects and um there are some very legitimate reasons for people to take a look at them um Oh yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense to me. I'd love to sure. help organize that, but I won't be able to get it until next quarter. But I'm glad to help. Awesome. On that. I think Sean, you I'm... mentioned. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Dave. No, 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 no. You're fine. Um, you mentioned the blog post. Uh, is do we have as a group uh, blog under the CNCF umbrella? Uh, I see other groups have it. I don't know if we want it. But just ask you. That's a good question. I think under Tag Runtime, um, there's a top level Tag Runtime site, and I think there is a blog section. Yes. Uh, here's the link. Uh, awesome. oh, and it's empty. Maybe so maybe we can think of that. <laughs> there have been no blog posts. So, you know, hey, let's fill it up with special purpose operating systems and things. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. Uh, how do you submit the post there? What's the process? Is that three issues on GitHub? Yeah, there. Um, let me see if I can. There is a link I clicked, but I'm yeah. not sure what it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's the Hudo site. Yep. Yep. Uh, here's a link for that. So, really, it's just dropping in a markdown file. Nice. The ticket, so you open a ticket and the content of the ticket is the blog post. No, I think, no. Ah, I think no, you, no. Can, you can you can open a PR. So if I look at the ah, okay, uh, okay. repo, um, the the website uh, folder in that repo just looks like a, like a Hugo um, thing. Mm -hmm. So Hugo is a, is a static content generator. I uh, use it yeah. for a the website. And I guess there is just the subdirectory there. There ah, there's content. Content makes sense, and there's content blog, and it's empty. And we just file a new <laughs> uh, PR file markdown there, and then you can basically write a write a blog post. Yeah, it just has to have the front matter at the top of it, and it's really easy. We use it as well. Um, awesome. do, do we want to maybe think about this as a sequence? Do you want to do maybe a blog post first, and then maybe evolve that into a white paper, or do we see them as like two separate work streams? No, I think it it works into each other. Um, is separating the work streams. I mean, we have a, we have very limited resources, right? We have a very yeah. small group, and uh, so it would make sense just building momentum on one thing. Do we know yeah, if there are any metrics 
metrics, sorry, on this, because then maybe that could also shift the topic of the white paper. What, what do you mean by metrics? The website metrics uh, or, or how many people read this? You know, like maybe you put something out there and nobody reads it. Uh, sounds to me like probably not a good idea to put too much effort on a white paper or, or that. It's but. it's tough, right? Like I, I I would guess that since the blog post section is completely empty, it's not like has people subscribing to an RSS feed for it or something like that. But uh, I think that we could. Um, the way I see it, it would be great if we take all of our individual streams, we collaborate on this blog post, and then we push it out to, you know, bottle rocket people, flat car people, you know, all, all the different areas, and then see maybe what the feedback is from our own communities, and then we can use that to kind of shape what the white paper might look like. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. sense. Do we want to formalize it like we have the presentations or? We want to play it by ear. <laughs> you know, like maybe, scheduling. Maybe that's that's not a bad idea. I mean, we have those those intro presentations, right? Um, and when we wrap them up, we will have a backlog of recordings. And um, maybe the first blog post is just the hello world. And uh, we say, hey, this is the working group. This is the operating systems. Um, they are presented here. This is what unifies us. Like this is all the same for us, and this is what makes us special. Um, and these are our use cases. And then it it, it it feels like I mean it's a little bit you know starting from the wrong end because it's not about the, the user and the users, but what you know the, the technology we use. But uh, maybe it evolves into something, and we meet in the middle. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think what we could maybe come out from it is. I, I'm not sure we've ever had a clear definition, right? We, mm -hmm. we look at all the pre the presentations and we provide like, here's the common themes and this is how, based on this, we've defined ourselves and these are the five properties or whatever that is, look for yourself and then throw it out there and people tell us we're wrong and then we evolve it. Yeah. And I think what, what these need to clarify is exactly what our operating systems are used for and why it's a good idea, right? Because, I mean, sometimes you have trouble explaining what it does and why it does it like that. So th there was a nice uh, blog post. I, I, thought, I think you wrote it. Uh, I think I have a link that tried to explain what immutability is and things mm -hmm. like that. So the, the very uh, basics. So before anybody jumps into details and tries something, they have to understand why. So I think mm -hmm. you, you had a blog post. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a new link. <laughs> so I think uh, posts that clarify, uh, you know, the various terms and explain to people why it's important to go that way and for specific use cases, maybe it's a good uh, way to start. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. And maybe it's a good preparation for when we join. Uh, conferences so people come a bit prepared and more familiar with the subject like they know what on earth we're doing right well that blog post is nice yeah try to um, to do a summary um a little bit to give an overview for uh newcomers basically because um there is a strong difference between immutable OSs and uh, typical Linux system, and people get very confused. Uh, so a lot of the same question uh, popping up again and again. So try to make things a little bit more um, ease out for newcomers there. He got tired of answering questions, so he decided to write <laughs> it down. So every time you ask no, something, uh, it already sends you the link. <laughs> That's super good. Um, I'm working on a presentation for uh, Southern California Linux Expo, which is in March, that's like why we have immutable OSs. So this is super valuable. Um, I would like to uh, take some of that content and validate it with several of you folks. So I might reach out to you on Slack and just say, here's what I'm saying. Do you think I'm a total liar or right on the money? 
notably notably in the in the overview um fedora chorus seems to be missing would probably be worth if you if you want to represent and based on that content uh to include it uh, red hat uses fedora to drive openshift uh, Red Hat chorus so it's a it's a pretty like special use case and, and a single use case but i mean openshift is um has some spread so it might be worth mentioning Um, back to the KubeCon thing, I, I did uh, put a link to the doc uh, in the main channel. So if anyone else wants to add any questions or thoughts that they think that we want to uh, want to make sure that any of the people on the panel actually talk about. Just throw it in there. Um, you know, we don't know what we're going to end up with when it comes time to it. Um, so we might not be able to cover everything, but it'd be great to get some really good questions in there. I think it's it's better to have like more ideas that we can fit in than the other way around. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> I think we have 35 minutes. I'm I'm going to guess it's going to go by really fast. Um, but we don't, we want to avoid sitting on stage and waiting for someone to think of a question to ask. <laughs> yeah. Any other topics for today? I have a small update on because like everybody was so interested in system leases X uh, when I first presented it. And I mean, Kairos folks are using it. There is a work in progress PR that one of the Fletka maintainers is working on, which I'd like to uh, get your attention to. And then so currently when you when you apply a SysX, um, then and your wherever you apply it, like when a SysX ships something in slash USR, uh, then USR is affected, ETC and opt. Um, wherever you apply it, um, that base directory will turn read only if it was mutable before, right? That's fine for us because we are mutable disk close. But if you want to use SysX on more general purpose operating systems. Yeah, it uh, might cause some issues. Uh, also, at least for the case of Flatcar, um, our ETC is mutable because we want users to be able to co configure their stuff. So we can't really use configs right now on ETC. And we have our own uh, system to basically have a layered uh, mount there, but uh, still be able to write. Now, we, we want to generalize this approach. And um, there's this PR. Um, that we're working on um, that will allow optionally mutable um, overlays. And uh, so OverlayFS has this feature where the uh, the lower idea, basically the, the 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 bottom of your of your layer stack uh, that you do with OverlayFS, uh, can also be the directory that takes writes like your upper deer. So you would have kind of a, a SysX sandwich where the lower there is um, slash USR, and then you have the SysX stuff layered in, and then you have the upper deer also USR or some other directory that, that takes writes, right? Um, and that would make the, the overall file system appear mutable. Uh, and there are a number of use cases where this is very useful. So that works ongoing, and um, yeah, there's the PR for it. Interesting. In case uh, you can. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Daniel. There's also like in the there's the tech runtime meeting today, and there's a demo of that. Uh, if you want to see, it's eight a.m. Pacific time. Okay. Uh, and since it writes to a directory, it's only meant to be reconstructed in the same order, I guess. I could look at the PR just as a hint. So. Uh, can you can you um, elaborate? No, no, I mean, all the rights end up in one directory. So if yeah. you want to reconstruct what you were seeing while the rights were happening, you would have to reapply all the layers in the same order, I guess. So something um, has to guarantee that you stack them up in the same order, that the, the directory that took the rights 
So if you want to reconstruct the same deer, like you had a base layer and then you applied other layers on top, and if the rights go to the bottom or the, whether the rights go to the top, I mean, to reconstruct uh, in, the original directory, you have to remember the order or something. In in all in overly FS uh, rights can only go to the top. Like everything else except for the top uh, is is read only. And um, I mean, you can you can fudge uh writes into into any layer of the stack but then overlays uh, overlay fs says hands off like no guarantees for nothing mm. you break it you keep it um so uh, it, and i mean the, the way that the, the susex are used now is that you don't have a top tier right and if you don't specify a top tier then you can't write um and that's the that's the result and the only thing that we add is basically top tier handling and oh, Optional, obviously, because one of the core features of SUSEX is uh, is immutability. So we are very careful there not to break anything. Nice. What is the meeting you said that is happening with the presentation? Is that today? Yeah, there's the also the tech runtime uh, meeting. Uh, we got the same name, but at a different tower. So it's at um, eight a.m. Pacific. It's in in ninety minutes. I think that uh, I can't remember. Time zones are complicated. I need to let me check. Let me check the calendar. I have it because uh, uh, so Kai will have uh, this demo <laughs> and we align on it uh, beforehand. So yeah, it's a ninety minutes. Yeah. Um. So background of that demo is the is the run C uh, issue that that uh, bubbled up. Um, I think roughly two weeks ago. And everybody just panicked because there wasn't much uh, upfront information, and um, so that was the first time we used uh, we used SUSEX to actually uh, have a stopgap solution so that we can take time uh, in publishing new updates. Um, our our image based updates, uh, distro updates, are out now, so the the um, the issue is fixed ultimately. But um, as a stopgap solution, we pointed users. Um, to a automatically built um, Docker SUSEX that they could uh, that had the patch, and they could uh, they could just apply it and uh, and have a fix immediately. So that was great to have for an image based OS. Any other topics? All right. We can call it for the week. Uh, so next meeting uh, will be the first Thursday in March, so March 7th. Um, in the meantime, see you all on the Slack channel. Thank you, yeah. everybody. See everyone. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.